Hey guys, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'm excited to show you a super cool project that we finished here in 2022. I'm outside of Fort Wayne, Indiana in this little town called Columbia City and we put up a 60 foot wide, 80 foot long and 20 foot tall building for a young family. It's going to be an indoor volleyball court. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let's take a look on the inside and um, I'm going to show you some very cool features of this building. At 60 foot wide and 80 foot long, you're looking at a building that took up 4,800 square foot of just floor space. If you add in the loft, you've got another 24 foot, 80 foot long, and that gave them another 1,920 square foot, okay? If you wanna know what a building this size costs in this level of quality, well, the math comes out around $38 per square foot, okay? So for 38 bucks a square foot, you're talking about a five inch concrete floor, you're talking about all that floor space, you know, five transom windows, 11 double hung windows, high quality garage doors, high quality walk doors. And this is what quality post frame building looks like. I realize there's a lot of different markets out there. There's a lot of different appetites for building. Some people just need a quick storage box and they wanna build it really on the cheap. Some people are looking for high quality buildings. So for this video, I wanna encourage you to show you what a good high end building really looks like and what it's gonna cost you to put together. So as we stand under the loft, here's the thing. Anytime you're doing a construction project, you start with a game plan. And for this particular building, the game plan, when you're looking at a 24 foot span, we've got 12 foot two by tens that are spanning here from our center support out to the outside wall. And then we've got another 12 foot that's gonna run back to the outside wall over there. Now, here's what we first thought. We figured that we were gonna do these supports and they were gonna be spaced every 10 foot. So we would have gone one there, two, three, and there would have been a fourth one right around here. What we did, because that was the original plan, is underneath each of these posts, even though the concrete is actually five inches thick, we actually took right down here and did a 15 inch by 15 inch and made it about eight inches thick, knowing that this is where that support is going to be to brace the loft. However, you notice the post is gone, and that's what I'm trying to say about changing the engineering. Our client came to us and said, would there be a way you could alter that construction to basically have less posts? So we went back to the engineering at the lumber yard and said, yeah, if we just double up on a couple of LVLs, then we can literally get this 40 foot span out of the LVLs and just go every 20 foot with the post. We eliminated a few extra posts that kind of would have gotten in the way. Not overly complex, but those are the things that you want to think through as you're doing it and make the alterations because it opens the space up quite a bit. It's just going to make it a lot more usable. Now, there was an upcharge, obviously, because when you're dealing with LVLs, 40 foot LVLs, and these guys are 12 inches by an inch and a half, each one of them. But that's how the engineering came back and super happy with that change. Hey, so there's two things I wanna point out here. Number one is if you're gonna do a loft in a building, you need to budget about one foot of thickness for the loft floor. By the time you get to the, your sheathing on and you're gonna use a two by 12 as your floor joist, you're gonna burn up about a foot. And people wonder, if I do a second floor in a building, how tall do I need to make that building? Well, you probably should go a minimum of 16 foot tall in order to get eight foot below and then seven foot above. Now in a building like this, we've got 10 foot below the loft and we've got nine foot above the loft. Now, one way you can also add a little bit, a little bit of a head height is you're gonna use a scissor truss. Scissor trusses don't cost a whole lot more money than a flat bottom cord truss. And the way that it works is the outside of your building, you've got say a 412 pitch, but the inside, the bottom cord of the building, 
you're only going to get maybe a 1.5 12 pitch. So from the outside wall to the center, you're only going to gain about one and a half inches for every foot you're moving towards. Well, what's that mean? It means that in this building, if you're standing at the wall, you've got 20 foot from the floor up to the ceiling. But when you're standing here at the very center of the building, right here, you've got about 24 feet. So it's just a little bit of extra as you're thinking it through. It's gonna help these guys as they're in here enjoying their volleyball games. All right, so a couple things I wanna point out is, firstly, we've got a manifold system here that's gonna control radiant floor heat. A lot of people ask, is radiant floor heat a better alternative? And the answer is yes, it will cost you. But if you think about a slab this size at 4,800 square feet, these PEX lines that are running all through the building are literally gonna turn this into like a giant warm cooking stone. It's the perfect way to heat a building this size because the heat actually will stay closer to the ground and it just creates a cozy feeling. And everybody that has the, the in-ground floor heat, especially in the Midwest, I hear nothing but very positive things about it. On a building this size, we do have to use a different type of post. Uh, traditionally, a decent barn builder is gonna at least use a three-ply two by six post. When we get at 18 foot and taller, we go with a four ply post. And then obviously you can see, as I talked about in a lot of my videos, we did stick with the Richland, um, the laminate uh, column here from, uh, it's called a green post and it has a lifetime warranty against post rot. We went with the double two by six skirt board and then also always encourage people, go ahead and just use house wrap if you're gonna take the time to build a building, it's worth the extra few hundred dollars. Take the time to put the house wrap on there because if you ever spray foam, you're gonna wanna have that um, put together. I'm really proud of my clients. They did this whole floor heat themselves and I think it's gonna be a total game changer when everything gets fired up. Let's check out this loft. Biggest encouragement is try to be forward thinking. How are you gonna interact with your space? What's your long-term plan? You wanna think through the size of the doors you're gonna put in, where you wanna put windows. A lot of times on the phone, when new clients will call me, they'll say, well, I'll just do that later in reference to they can cut a door in or they'll put a window in. And I'll tell you as a professional builder, it's a whole lot easier to just do that framing during the time of the build. So don't be in such a hurry, take a minute, think your project through and here's one illustration right here. Look at how cool these windows are. All this is seven different places running down this upstairs loft wall, four foot tall, eight foot wide. And these are gonna be giant sheets of plexiglass. Now this whole upstairs area, I think the long-term plan is make it a game room, ping pong table, come and put a bar up here, hang out with your friends. But this is the place to be, because you can come up, hang out, and stand on the edge, watch your friends down here playing some volleyball on a Friday night, and just have a great time. So that's what I mean by thinking it through, and I appreciate working with clients who have that kind of wherewithal. So really clever, it's gonna be super cool. Can't wait to come back and see this whole project when they're finished. Hey guys, as we wrap up, I just wanna point out a couple final touches. Number one, you see the front of the building here. Put a porch on, you know, they're so classy. They keep the snow and the rain off of your doors and it's just a nice way to break up a big wall like this. The other thing, the little details, don't forget to hang a good quality gutter. On big buildings like this, you need to go with say a six inch gutter and put your snow break bars up on the roof. You don't want a snowstorm or ice storm to come and damage the gutters on a building and they certainly will if you miss out on some of those little details. Anyway, I hope you're inspired. We really appreciate you stopping by our YouTube channel. Do us a favor, hit the subscribe button. It's very helpful as we're putting videos out there to uh, help our audience. And uh, anyway, thanks again. Good luck.